Worthy is the Lamb that is slain for you and I. We bless the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Truly this afternoon, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, is getting the glory, he's getting the honor, and he's getting all the praises. From kingdom to kingdom, from dominion to dominion, from remnant to remnant, all the glory, the honor, and the praises belongs to our Heavenly Father. We bless, adore, and strive unto his holy and righteous name. For he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's everything that we need this morning, and we give God the glory, the honor, and all of the praises. Amen. Blessings and favor be unto each and every one of you joining us this afternoon. Let me start off by saying happy Father's Day to all the fathers, so I don't forget to do that uh, before we go into the word of the Lord. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers this afternoon. Let's pray. Father, today we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, we just adore and strive unto your holy and righteous name. Even as we enter your presence right now, we repent of all sin and iniquity. Everything we've thought, said, don't imagine that we keep you from getting the glory. Even now we repent. We ask you to shift us and everyone on these lives, shift us and put us in unity on this day, Father, that you have made the first day of the week. And we know that you're the Father over every Father, Heavenly Father. So we thank you for this day. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, counsel, might, and the fear of the Lord. We just ask you, Father, to impart and activate and align us with your word today, Father. Touch everyone under the sound of my voice, God, and bring us in alignment for your word today. That you'll be glorified, that you'll be edified, bind Satan and every satanic attack that comes against your will now. But we decree and declare fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh anointing. We pray for every nation, every nationality joining these lives and we'll see this live recording in the future. We pray for them now. And Father God, we ask you to touch, shift them now. Bring turnaround in their lives. Bind every demonic attack coming against them in the airway. But release a standard against the enemy. Right now we bind Satan. We bind Lucifer. We bind the devil. We bind that dragon, that serpent, that scorpion, that snake. Every spirit that will not give you all glory. We bind the antichrist spirit. And we decree and declare your power and your glory. We release that anointing that shifts the atmosphere. That glory that brings signs, wonders, miracles, and demonstrations. We release it even now. In the mighty name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, shift us for your kingdom and for your glory today. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Those of you that have your Bible, so if you will, the Proverbs chapter 2. And let's look at verse number 6. Proverbs chapter 2, starting with verse number 6. For those of you that are taking notes, wisdom of our Heavenly Father for his chosen seed. The wisdom of our Heavenly Father for his chosen seed. We know today is Father's Day, but I want to talk about the Father over all fathers. And I want to talk about the wisdom that comes from the Father. When I woke this morning, the Heavenly Father, I was seeking God for a word. He put one word in my spirit, and that was the word wisdom. My sons and my daughters are seeking me for wisdom. Amen. Read this following. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up the sound wisdom for the righteous. He is the bucker to them that walk uprightly. Look at the next verse. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. And then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity and a every good path when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul distression shall preserve thee understanding shall what keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man from the man that speaketh four things look at the next verse who leave the path of unrighteousness to walk in the way of darkness look at the next verse who reject who rejoice to do evil and delight in forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they are forward in the path, their path, to deliver from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. And I want to stop right there. You may be seated. The word of the Lord to the body of Christ today is one word. That word is wisdom. Amen. Wisdom plays a vital role. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and apply the best course of action based 
on knowledge and understanding. That's what wisdom is. Let me say that again. Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and to apply the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding. The Father is saying to us today that even though many of us may be celebrating Father's Day, we need wisdom. The wisdom that we need is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And we need the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us, to alter our steps, that we are in sync, in tune with the Father. And everything that comes against the wisdom of God, we're to cast it down. Notice, Proverbs tells us, get wisdom, get knowledge, but with all thou getting, get understanding. Knowledge is experience, as you hear me say so many times. Understanding plays a vital role because if we don't understand the knowledge, we won't have wisdom, a balance. Wisdom is a mortal skill for living, revealed through God's word, which instand you, I'm sorry, which let me read that again. Wisdom is a mortal skill of living, yeah, for living through God's word, which in stands, I may have miswrote wrote that wrong, us about how to act. It leads and guides us on how, it instructs us on how to act. Wisdom brings instructions. It allows us to be led and guided. Now, if wisdom can bring instruction, then what is wisdom? Wisdom comes through the Holy Spirit. If wisdom can lead and guide us, then what is wisdom? Wisdom is the gift from God. Wisdom comes from the Father, and I'll show that to you in the Word in just a minute. Wisdom is God's gift, so every believer should ask God for the gift of wisdom, amen? Wisdom is truth applied, is specific situations, in specific situations for godly ends. Wisdom is applied to specific situations, to specific circumstances, wisdom is applied. Many times in our walk and many times in life, we will seek God for wisdom about certain things and certain situations and circumstances that we're facing. A lot of things that we deal with from day to day comes with automatic knowledge, but there comes a time we need skill and the skill of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to help us to make the right decision. Many times as leaders of sons and daughters in the kingdom, things come up and you say, well, you know, I normally would handle this, but I need to seek wisdom. What are you saying? I need to seek God. Now, a lot of people say, well, let me just pick up the phone and call apostle or call bishop or call prophet or call so-and-so. And so what are they saying? I'm seeking a greater level of understanding through a man and a woman of God. I, 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 I'm seeking God, but I'm seeking God through his servants. But let me, let me help you with something. Even in seeking God through the servant, make sure you seek God first. Make sure you seek the Father first. Because God may give you the answer, and when you call that servant, they'll give you the same answer. Guess what that is? That's confirmation. See, and when you call someone else, you say, well, I prayed and the Lord spoke this to me, and so and so and so and so spoke this to me, or, or, or the Lord, I prayed and the Lord uh, got an answer from the Lord, but I want to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying unto you. That's a wise way to ask the question. Because if the Holy Spirit is speaking the same thing to them that he's speaking to you, guess what happens? They will give you the second confirmation. They will confirm, and the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word of God be established. Now watch this. So it's important that you understand that wisdom instructs us, that wisdom comes in certain situations and circumstances. The word of wisdom is a special gift it comes from God. That is found, and we'll go over it in a minute when I start giving you scriptures. That is found in 1 Corinthians 11, verse number 12. It says, I, I won't read it now. I want to go someplace else in the word. Look at verse, uh, I, I want to do this. I want you to go up to verse number one for a moment. 
Go to verse number one in Proverbs chapter two. Notice who God speaks to. My son, if thou would receive my words and hide them and hide my commandments with thee, so thou shalt incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart unto understanding. Now watch this. God speaks. He says, my son, if you would receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so shall thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. Apply thine heart unto understanding. Now know something. God speaks through, the, through his servant here. And he says, now the key is wisdom and applying the principles of wisdom to yourself. Now he says, your ear, but now watch this. God's word is his wisdom. God's word is the wisdom that he released for you and I, sons and daughters. His word, his wisdom comes through Jesus Christ, who is the word of God manifested. It comes through the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of Christ, the very breath of God. And not only that, but his wisdom also comes as a result of seeking to know wisdom. Seeking to know him. Now notice what it says in this next verse. Listen, it says, incline thy ear, which is thy spirit. Listen, saints, what goes in the ear goes into your heart. What goes in the ear goes into your spirit. God is decreeing and declaring right now through the prophets. And every word that he's speaking into the atmosphere right now is a word of instruction. It's a word of wisdom. It's a word of preparation. Even in the house this morning, we got the prophetic word of the Lord. God is saying, be still. Some of us are taking things in our own hands. Some of us are trying to do things our own way. But the Father saying, I'm giving you strategic strategies through my word. I'm saying, I'm your provider. I'm saying, I'm your provision. I'm saying, I'm your enablement. I'm everything that you need. I'm your Jehovah Shireh, the Lord God that provides. He says, I don't need your help. I'm quite capable of doing it what? Myself. All I need you to do is be still and trust me. Be still and go through the process. Be still and allow me to equip you and to prepare you in this season. Allow me to bring the shift in your life. Allow me to bring the change in your life. Why? You won't regret it. See, when God do it, you won't regret it. You won't say, oh Lord, I, I wish I had waited on you. When God do it, you won't say, Lord, I shouldn't have made that decision after you spoke and said not to do this. After you spoke and said not to do that. If I'd just been still, I'm talking to somebody right now, and waited on God, I would have got the right answer. I would have made the right move. I would have made wisdom and understanding would have caused me to move the way God was leading me. Look at verse number four in Proverbs chapter two. It says, if thou seek her as silver, and search for her as for hidden treasure. Look at the next verse. Then shall thou understand and fear the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So watch this now. So wisdom is not about man's knowledge. It's not about man's understanding. But it's about the spiritual things. What did God say this morning? He said that I'm a spirit. He said they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Now he didn't put it in those exact words. Because he said that his spirit leads us and guides us and alters our step with spirit, the Holy Spirit. What wisdom? The wisdom of his spirit. See? It is the spirit of God that leads and guides us. Now some of us will say, well, I, I, I have a problem understanding that. Well, when you get in your car and you begin to seek God, you're seeking the Holy Spirit. When you begin to seek an answer from the Father, you're seeking the Holy Spirit. Not only are you seeking the Holy Spirit, but you're seeking the spirit of wisdom, which is one of the seven lamps of fire around the throne of God. His wisdom. Look at verse number six. For the, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. God gives it to us. All we got to do is ask for it. Father, I like wisdom. What does James tell us? 
If any man lack wisdom, let him what? Ask of God. See, God says, I want you to ask me for it. Now, a lot of folk want it, but they won't ask. We can't have, we can't obtain because we won't ask. Many men, many fathers seek God for wisdom. But the mistake many of us make is we don't wait on God. We pray about it, but then we won't be still and allow God to intervene. We won't be still and allow God to bring the shift. But if we just be still and wait on the Father, we'll begin to see the shift. If we just be still and wait on God, we'll begin to see the change. Because I'm telling you something, saints. God is bringing change right now. God is smacking the body of Christ right now. God is bringing them in line right now. God is scattering the flock right now. He's calling sons and daughters unto himself right now. There's a great separation going on in the body of Christ right now because they're seeking wisdom. Not only that, but they're seeking truth. They're seeking the word of God. They're seeking the doctrine of the Father right now, which is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of the Holy Spirit is what true sons and daughters are seeking. In other words, I want to be equipped the right way. I want to be anointed the right way. I want to be empowered the right way. I, I, in other words, I don't want to go around to get to the authority in the kingdom. I want to go through the process so that God can equip me. That requires wisdom. Wisdom teaches us when to move. It teaches us what to say. It teaches us how to say it. One of the things don't, the enemy don't want you to have is wisdom. He don't want you to have the measure of the Holy Spirit that comes with power and that comes with authority. Look at verse number seven. He laid up sound wisdom for righteousness. Now watch this. Sound wisdom is the word of God. God's word is sound. And not only that, but he says, I will give you a sound mind. Watch that. That soundness causes us to become controllable, disciplined, not acting out of our own emotions, not acting out of our own feelings, because see, when it comes to wisdom, we need wisdom for emotions. We need wisdom for self-control. We need wisdom for self-discipline. We need wisdom to cause us to surrender, to submit, to bow down to God. Where does that come from? It comes through the word of God. It says in that verse, he lied up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is the booker to them that walk up rightly. He keepeth, verse number eight, the path of judgment and preserve it the way of his saints. See, wisdom leads us. She guides us. Some of us don't know wisdom is considered a she. She leads, she guides, she alters our steps. She causes us to go the way God has ordained our lives to. Look at verse number nine. And then shall thou understand righteousness. See, many times we see righteousness, but because we don't, have the knowledge we don't understand righteousness well why does it have to be if you've been around somebody and something happens and somebody say why does it have to happen that way why did that have to happen the way it turned out because god had a plan and because you like wisdom and knowledge and understanding why god planned to do it this way now wisdom comes through relationship write that down because if you don't have a relationship with the holy spirit guess what you don't have wisdom Wisdom requires a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's one of the one of the seven lamps of fire around the throne that I just said. You want wisdom? Get that intimate relationship. Get intimate with the Holy Ghost. Get intimate with the Holy Spirit. He'll give you wisdom. He'll lead you. He'll cause you to make the decisions that's pleasing to God. Well, what decision is pleasing to God? His doctrine, his commandments, his word. See, wisdom will lead you the right way, so he's going to give you truth. T-R-U-T-H. Truth is God's word. See, truth empowers you. Truth activates, it aligns you. It causes you to walk into measures of power and measures of understanding that's beyond your understanding. In other words, when wisdom comes, he brings power and authority. Watch this. The word of the Lord this morning was not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. God says, what I'm doing right now, I'm doing it by the Holy Spirit. So now it requires that you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit to see where God is leading you, to see where God is carrying you, 
so that the will of the Father can manifest in our lives. See, a lot of folk are trying to do it in our own ability. God says, uh-uh, not right now. Be sensitive to my voice. Be sensitive to my presence, said the Spirit of the Lord. God says, what I'm doing now requires sensitivity. In other words, you've got to be sensitive to my presence. You've got to know that I'm in your very presence and that I'm doing all things, saith the Spirit of the Lord. God says, I'm doing it now. I I'm intervening in Satan's plans. I'm intervening in the plots and the plans and the agendas of the enemy and those who allow the enemy to use them. And I'm manifesting my own will. I'm dominating what the adversary wants to do right now. And if you be still and wait on me instead of going left, I may tell you to go right. Because, see, I'm going to lead you the right way. Oh. Well, see, I'm going to tell you which way to go. When you get up early in the morning and begin to seek my face. When you get up in the wee hours of the morning, 3 and 2 a.m. in the morning and 4 a.m. in the morning, that's what I'm going to speak into your heart. Oh. See, that's what I'm going to speak into your spirit to lead you the way I want you to go. I, I'm going to give you the strategic strategy for the entire day in the workplace. Strategic strategy for the entire day in the marketplace. Those of you that understand the marketplace. In other words, going out into the hedges and the highways and fulfilling all I've ordained and purpose your life. See, that scripture you got Friday morning was not just a scripture, but that was a strategy for the marketplace for Friday. That's why my mercies are renewed every morning, said the Spirit of the Lord. So God says, I give you new wisdom and new strategies daily because my mercies are renewed and the tactic Satan used yesterday, he's not coming at you with that tactic today. He's coming from another direction. You need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit so when he shows up, you'll be empowered. Oh. You'll be activated. The Word will empower you and my Spirit will activate you and shift you and cause you to go the direction I'm leading you in this season. Many that are not in tune with the Holy Spirit are risk, really missing the voice of God right now. They're not in line. They're not in tune. They're deaf. To the, in, in other words, their spirit is asleep. But God is awakening the spirits of sons and daughters right now. Some of us are focused on woe is me. But God is saying, no, no, no. I don't want you to focus on woe is me. I want you to focus on my word. I want you to focus on my kingdom. I want you to focus on my glory. I want you to focus on spiritual things because the answer and the inheritance is in the spiritual things of God. What I've ordained, what I purpose, and what I promise to you is in my kingdom. Oh. So when you align up and begin to seek the things of the kingdom, the abundance is in my kingdom. Healing is in my kingdom. Deliverance is in my kingdom. Salvation is in my kingdom, said the Spirit of the Lord. Your needs is in the kingdom. See, you're trying to feast from earthly places when I position you to feast out of heavenly places. I position and empower in your mouth the word that you need to speak into the atmosphere and manifestation comes because you're speaking spirit to spirit. Oh, that was free. You, 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 you're lying in tune with the Holy Ghost. And he's taking what you're saying and bringing it back to Jesus. And Jesus is speaking over to the Father. The Father is decreeing and declaring that this needs to be done. Go tell him that I said do this. And because you're lining up with the spiritual things of God, instead of trying to figure out the corner things in the mind of corner man, you're able to maneuver in the spirit. Huh? And they're wondering, how did you get here because of relationship? Because I desire our intimacy with the Father, with the Holy Ghost, with the Son. I desire to know what it is God is really saying to me right now. Not what I think he's saying, not what I feel he's saying, but Father, what are you really saying? My son and my daughter, I'm saying trust me. I'm saying rely on me. I'm saying depend on me. I'm saying it's not in your ability. I already know what you're going through. I already know what you're facing. I already know what you're experiencing. I just need you to know that I know. Oh, that was free. Then shall thou understand righteousness. See, now watch verse number eight. He says, he keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. God does it. See, he leads you down a straight path. See, the steps of a good man are ordered. Oh, the word says, by the Lord. It says, I go ahead of thee. 
and I make the crooked places what? Straight. So God goes before us and he makes the crooked places straight for us. Then he says, now that you understand, I'm preserving the path. I'm preserving the way that you go. Now notice what he says in verse number nine. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, there every good path. God says, I'm going to lead you the right way. But I'm going to give you understanding, not your understanding. Understanding through my word. Understanding that comes with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Understanding that comes with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Understanding that gives you strategic strategies in the spirit realm to maneuver in my kingdom. I'm going to give you that understanding. I'm going to give you weapon and power in my word. And when you speak the word, the word has been assigned to go forth and fulfill what I've ordained for it to do in your life. So see, because you line up with the Holy Ghost, I can speak through you. And when I speak, the word will go do what I ordered it to do through you. Oh, why? Because I'm in you. Oh, that was free. I'm living inside of you. Oh, that was free. So when you speak, I speak. Oh, that was free. So when you decree, I decree. Oh, that was free. God says, I want you to understand that your relationship with me causes you to speak what I put in your heart, causes you to speak what I put in your spirit. And because I put it there, it must go get what I want, saith the spirit of the Lord. God says, because I put it in you, it has to obey me. It has to do what I want. It has to do what I say. You, you see, God says, God says, you are to fulfill my desire. Many of us are trying to fulfill our desire. And we're wondering why it's not working. God says it's not working because it's not my desire. It's not working because it's not my will. It's not working because I have not preordained a destiny for your life. I have positioned you to walk in wisdom, the wisdom of the Holy Ghost, the fire of God, the anointing that comes with it. Demonic forces can't stay in my presence. So if you're in the presence of God, guess what? Demons have to flee. Therefore, you can fulfill what God is ordaining for you to walk in, to walk in his presence because the enemy can't work. The enemy's work won't work. Look at verse number 10 in Proverbs chapter 2. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, now notice something. The Holy Spirit comes in you because he's wisdom. <laughs> See, he's a gift. See, God says, ask for the Holy Ghost. Watch this now. The Holy Ghost is wisdom. But the Holy Ghost is the gift of God because he says, ask and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, the, the Bible tells us in, in Acts chapter 2 that on the day of Pentecost, the gift showed up. Jesus promised the apostles, all of them, not just the 12, but all of them, I'm going to send you another comforter. The comforter is the gift of the Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Spirit shows up, the gift shows up. Oh. But when the Holy Spirit shows up, wisdom show up. When wisdom enters into thine heart, verse number 10, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Pleasant unto thy soul. Notice he says, wisdom comes into your spirit. Knowledge is pleasant unto your soul. In other words, you don't have a problem with knowledge. Amen. When somebody releases something to you, 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 you know, there used to be a, a video, a movie many years ago called Number Five. Some of you might have seen Number Five. Short circuit, that's it. Number five was the, was the name of the, the robot. And, and, and he desired wisdom. He could go through the library and read the whole, read the whole library, all the books in the library in a matter of minutes. And then he said, I need more input. In other words, I, I, when he didn't get knowledge, he was short circuit. Some of us are short circuit because we don't have connection with the Holy Spirit. We don't have connection with the Holy Ghost. So what's happening is we don't have spiritual power. We don't have spiritual authority. We don't have the wisdom that we need, the fire and the Holy Ghost that comes that brings us that supernatural power and authority that God is ordaining for the body of Christ to walk in the day. Many of us are walking around as zombies, lost, trying to figure out what in the world is happening, what in the world is going on, and the devil's deceiving some of us. He's got us looking one way, and God is saying, look at me. Look. Keep your eyes on me in this season. Keep your eyes on me in this hour. Look at verse number 11. Distression shall preserve thee. Understanding shall what? Keep thee. God says, wait a minute. If you pay attention, you're going to be all right. If you seek understanding, I'll bring clarity. Well, what is understanding? Understanding is a gift that comes through the Holy Spirit. God gives us wisdom. 
He gives us knowledge. He gives us understanding. He gives us counsel, might, and the fear of the Lord. God brings all of that to you and I, sons and daughters in the kingdom. Look at verse number 12. To deliver thee from the way of evil men. This is the purpose. So that you deliver it. I notice what he says in that verse. To deliver you from the way of evil men. From that man that speaketh forward things, God says. That's why I give you spiritual wisdom. That's why I give you spiritual knowledge. So that you understand, I don't want you walking that way. I don't want you traveling down the road of destruction. Wicked and evil things will bring us into a place of destruction. It will bring us into a place where we are bring, brought separ separated. Many believers are separated from the power of the Holy Ghost. They're separated from God right now because they won't live godly. They're separated from God right now because they won't live righteous. They're separated from the Father right now because they won't surrender to the voice of God. They're doing their own things and they're satisfied. They're happy. But I want you to go to Proverbs, right there where you are. Look at chapter number four. We're about done here. Proverbs chapter four. Look at verse number, uh, number seven. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thou getting, get understanding. Notice the two key, key, two key things there. Wisdom is the principal thing. We need it for balance. Therefore, get it. Ask God for it. Father, give me wisdom. Heavenly Father, I need your wisdom. Heavenly Father, I need your knowledge. Excuse me. I need your understanding. Not my understanding, but your understanding. Get wisdom. Notice what it says in the next verse. Get understanding. Look at verse number eight. Exalt her. And she shall what? Promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou doest embrace her. Most people want to embrace wisdom. Wisdom will advance you. That means promote. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That means it will not advance. It will not promote. It will not go forward. It cannot accelerate. It cannot advance. But wisdom will advance you when you exalt her. Thank God for wisdom. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. See, I, I give you glory for the wisdom. See, because it will advance me. It will promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. In other words, it will cause honor to come upon you. You don't have to honor yourself. You don't need people to honor you. When wisdom is there, they honor the Holy Spirit on your life. They will reverence and respect the honor of the Holy Spirit within you and upon you. She shall give thee thine head. She shall give to thine head an ointment of grace, a crown of glory, shall she deliver thee. See, oil comes through wisdom. The ointment of God is the oil of God. Not only that, grace, God says, I give you grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. We are not deserving when we should have been killed, when we should have been taken out, God allowed grace. Every morning he allows mercies. Mercy allows us to, to, to repent daily for sin and iniquity. Where God would take us out, he grants mercy. When we do that thing that should cause us to be killed or slaughtered instantly, God shows mercy. Why does we have mercy? Through the sacrifice, the blood sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at, look at the next verse, number 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, and the years of thy life shall be many. Notice what it says. Listen to me, hear me, and you'll live a long time. Many people that live a short life lack wisdom. You can't tell them anything, and they know everything. You can't advise them based upon past experiences, because they call that old-fashioned. Mama, you're old-fashioned now. Daddy, that's old-fashioned. We don't do that the way, but the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. It's just being displayed in a different generation. It, it, it's just coming at you 
from a totally different perspective, but it's the same devil. Whoop. It's the same demon in operation. It's the same spirit in operation when it comes to the things of God. And we must understand that as God shifts and leads and guides us, we've got to recognize the enemy in every form, in every attack. It says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the path of righteousness. When we get wisdom, wisdom leads us the right way. It carries us as God has purposed and ordained our lives to. Turn to uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse number 10. Proverbs 9, look at verse number 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now notice what God says. When you reverence me, when you respect me, that's fear. When you honor me, when you obey me, that's, that's fear. To honor God, to obey God is to reverence and to respect him. That's fear. He says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the starting point. Most people don't get wisdom until they first acknowledge that there is a God. They can't have wisdom until they acknowledge that God exists. Now, I'm not talking about man's carnal wisdom. I'm talking about the wisdom that comes through the Holy Ghost. That's a different mention. That comes with power. It comes with deutimus. It comes with authority. That wisdom, when it comes, it will shift you. It will shake you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, what does he do? He shakes you. Oh, that's a different kind of wisdom. That's a wisdom that comes packing the authority of kingdom. See, it says the beginning of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The knowledge, see, wisdom brings balance, but we need knowledge and understanding in order to have balance. Look at the next verse. For by me thou days shall be multiplied and thou years of life shall in be increased. See, God wants to increase us. One of the things that bring long life is your relationship with the Holy Ghost. Your relationship with wisdom. See, watch this. Take somebody through the limits this demon possessed. And as you cast them spirits out, the countenance will begin to change. All of a sudden, that darkness goes off of them and the glow of the light comes on. Then their whole face changes. What happens? Life comes inside of you. When the Holy Spirit comes, life comes. When Jesus Christ comes, life comes. So what happens is the old man of death leaves. Oh. So see, when the old man of death leaves, you start looking younger. Say, where you been? Where you been hiding? What's that glow on you? What's that anointing on your face? You, you look so happy. You look different now. Yeah, I, I, I found a new love. His name is Jesus Christ. I, I found a new love. His name is the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I found a new love, the word of God, to worship and to glorify and to magnify him. And I noticed that he began to keep me looking young. Even though I'm, even though I'm 60, I might look like I'm 50. Why? Because he keeps you looking preserved. He preserves you. You know, some of us don't understand what preserved means. Uh, so back in the old days, they used to can the food. They would pick butter beans and string beans and tomatoes and all that stuff out of the garden. And they would go buy jars and they would take these lids and they would boil the food and get it good and ready and hot. Then they would take it and put it in these jars and seal it tight. Set it on the shelf, sealed it for years and set it on the shelf and they would go in there in the winter months and get that food and cook it when they couldn't go out in the garden and pull out the fresh vegetables. That's called preserving. Now you can sprinkle stuff on the food to preserve it. Put it in the box and put it in the refrigerator. It used to be you had to can it and seal it tight and leave it there until you open. But when you broke it, you had to eat it right in that serving so that it didn't go bad quickly. God preserves our bodies. He preserves our spirit. He preserves our mind, our soul. He preserves us for his glory, for his kingdom when we fully embrace him. 
When we allow his will to manifest in our lives, he begins to bring that shift to preserve you. And not only that, but he gives you the vital equipment, the vital tools that you need called the word of God. The power and the authority that comes against demonic forces. See, God's, give God's word give you authority. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. I said I wanted to read this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 28. It says, and God had have sent some. I want to make sure I'm in the right place now. Not 28. Go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse number 8. I said 28. Look at verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Oh, see that? The Holy Spirit gives you the word of wisdom. See, God's word is loaded with wisdom. There'll be someone to come to you and say, I need some advice. Uh, can you share this with you? Can you help me with this? What are they asking for? A word of wisdom. Now, be careful not to just give them your wisdom, but to give them the wisdom of God's word. And not only the wisdom of God's word, but also instruct them to go and read it. What does the Holy Spirit say about this? Have you sought God? Some folk don't know to read the word is to seek God. They don't know to open your Bible and search the scripture is to seek God. When you open your Bible and you begin to search the scripture, you're seeking God at that very moment. You're seeking God for the answer at that very moment. Notice what it says, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Notice something, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit said the Lord of hosts. So those of you trying to get it done without the Holy Spirit, you're wasting your time. God is moving by the Holy Spirit in this season and in this hour. God is moving supernaturally by the Holy Ghost, by his spirit. It cannot be done without the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's the one given ruling authority for those of us that don't realize and understand that in the earthly realm right now. God is doing things by his spirit. The word of God tells us in Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry, Ephesians, let me go back. Ephesians 5 and verse 15 and 16 says these words. See then that thou walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, or as wise, redeeming time because of the days are evil. If it was ever time we're living in evil days, we're living in it now. Now, walk in the counsel of the Holy Spirit in your mind. Not your mind, but the mind of Christ. He came that we may have life and he brings transformation. He gives us a brand new mind. God gives you and me a new mind through the word. We must seek the word. I said this earlier, I'm going to read it again. James 1 and 5 says these words. If any man like, that means don't have enough of wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Many of us lack wisdom because we won't ask for it. We won't seek the Father for it. We won't seek God for James chapter 1 verse number 5. We won't seek God for wisdom. If we ask God, give it generously. He will generously give you all the Holy Ghost you need. Oh, that was free. That's what wisdom is. is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The word of God says in James 3 verse 17. But the wisdom is from above is pure. The wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable and gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's God's wisdom. It's full. It's peaceable. It's pure. 
That means there's no flaw in it. That means there's nothing to contaminate it. That's the wisdom of God. God's wisdom is full of mercy. Show me somebody that's merciless and I'll show you somebody that doesn't have wisdom. It's full of good fruit, the nine fruits of the spirit. It's full of fruits. Galatians 5.22 if you want to go read the nine fruits of the spirit in your spare time. Without partiality, in other words, when wisdom comes, it does not favor. But now wait a minute. God favors all. But see, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's the same to all. What he does for one, guess what? He'll do for another. Proverbs 16 and 16 says these words. How much better is it to get wisdom than go? And to get understanding rather than choice or chosen silver. How much better is it to get wisdom than go? Let me tell you something. When you got wisdom, you got go. Most folk don't understand that. When the Holy Spirit comes, the power and the authority to speak into manifestation comes. Write that down. When the Holy Spirit comes, the power and the authority to speak into manifestation comes. Because the Holy Spirit brings power and authority, he comes with deutimus. Now watch this. So when he comes, since he is wisdom, the Holy Spirit is the wisdom. He is the gift of God. So when he comes, he can give you authority because he comes with power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. This is free. You should have what? Power. So if you got wisdom, you should have power over the enemy. Kingdom power, not just power. Kingdom authority, deutimus authority, not just power. See, when the Holy Spirit comes, he is the wisdom of God. So he shows up. Ecclesiastes 7 verse number 10 says it this way. Say not thou, what is the cause that the formal days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Many saints will open their mouth and say, I remember when I had it better. That is the worst thing you can say. If you are a born again believer, the worst thing you can ever say is I remember when I had it better, especially if God have you in a place where he's building, molding, shaping you, where he has you in the process. It is right there. Say not thou. Ecclesiastes 710. Go read it for yourself. It's right here, black and white. Say not thou. What is the cause of the formal days? were better than these. Don't say that. For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. In other words, you don't know what God is doing and why God is doing it right now. All you know is he has you in the process. Well, 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 well I remember when I, I had a house that was 3,600 square feet. Now I got one that's, 12, that's, that's, that's 1,200 square feet. Well, I lost 2,400. Yeah, but you may just be in the process. And God just may be taking you to see if I can bring you through the process without griping, without murmuring, without complaining. He may be just checking to see if you will go through and thank me in the middle of the process. If I can get glory from you while you're in the hard times. If you can magnify me in the tough times, fathers. See? See? See, I, I may allow it to come upon you because I want you. I want the glory. But some of us are not giving the glory. We're complaining. We're griping and fussing and arguing and raising sand and saying God wouldn't do me like this. Uh -uh. God says, wait a minute. The Lord giveth. Job said the Lord giveth. And the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So wait a minute. What do you mean God? It's God's. Remember, it ain't yours. It's God's. So he can do with it what he wants. Not to mention he can do with you what he wants. Because you're his too. Oh, wait a minute. That, that brought clarity, I hope. I hope that gave some of us clarity. That we ain't really got it all going on like that. It's just the grace and the mercy of God. It's him that blesses us and it's also him that can say, you know, enough. 
Let's see if you'll praise me now. Hallelujah. When that car starts giving you all kind of problems. Yes. I, I, I'm not telling you what I've heard. I'm telling you what I live every day. Yes. I went to the service station yesterday. <laughs> pumped my truck full of water. Got in that thing and it started riding and drove so good and got back home and parked it. Got in to go out to my mom's house and that thing started driving like crazy. Skipping and jumping and jerking and carrying on. I said, Lord, I done got gas in my water. In my water in my gas. What happened? It burned all the old gas out. You know, that's in the line. Then when it gets to that new gas you just put in there, that's when it started cutting the food. I said, Lord, what do I need to do? God said, go fill it half full of 93 octane. Put you some gas treatment in it and let it set overnight. I took it, parked it, got up, fired it up this morning, running smooth as a whistle. Bind the attack of the enemy and seek wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Seek wisdom from God. He'll tell you exactly how to move. And if you don't know what to do, he'll lead you to somebody that does. God's word tells us in Colossians 4 verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeem the time and let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. The word is clear. If we walk in wisdom, we walk in the Holy Ghost. Oh. If we walk in wisdom, we walk in the Holy Spirit. So walk in the wisdom or walk in wisdom toward them that are without those that don't have the Holy Spirit. Those that don't have a relationship. It says redeem the time and let your speech be always with grace. Remember what I've done for you. Remember how I was merciful and graceful to you. Don't forget where I brought you from. Season with salt. In other words, when you release, seek the Holy Spirit and he'll give you the salt. He'll give you the salt on what you're going to say. In other words, meat tastes good, but it tastes better with a little salt. It just flavors it right up. Seasoned. That means you paid the price. That means you've gone through the process. You season because you have done what is required and now that you can release, you remember where God brought you from. So now when you speak, you're seasoned up. Understand there are a lot of folk out there that ain't been through nothing so they don't have no seasoning. They speak foolishness rather than wisdom and knowledge. It says season with salt. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the word of God. See, God seasons you over a period of time. Now watch this. He says that ye may know how Ye ought to answer every man. See, the because of your relationship, because of your reading the word of God, God begins to season you. So when you open your mouth, you speak with wisdom. You speak with authority. You speak with direction. You speak with the, with, with the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. Colossians 4 verse 5 and 6. Proverbs 13 verse 10 says these words. Only by pride cometh contention but with well advice is wisdom when you see somebody with pride they're loaded with contention you can't tell them nothing you can't share nothing because they know everything they're loaded with pride they're never wrong some folk can become so proud that they'll have nothing and all of a sudden God bless them and they'll pass by you wanting to wave their hand and speak why? Because pride comes in, contention comes in. But the Bible says, but with be but the well advised is wisdom. Those who move with God will not move in anger. They will not be upset. They will not be prideful. Pride brings anger. See? Pride will make you angry. Pride will, will, will make you arrogant. It will make you hateful. You walk in envy and strife. You walk in manipulation and intimidation when pride comes. 
Jezebel comes and takes place when pride comes. But we've got to stay humbled in the presence of God and allow God to lead and guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 19 verse number 8 says these words, He that gathereth wisdom love his own soul, but he that keepeth understanding shall find good. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul, he that keepeth understanding findeth good. Your life, your mind is based upon your willingness to seek wisdom. Wisdom will stop you from making dangerous mistakes, crazy decisions, things that will take you out of this earth. Wisdom will stop you from making those decisions simply because you seek wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and verse number three, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. Let, I, I see people sometimes and I notice the conversation that they have and I say, Lord, I say you gave them two eels and one mouth, but they run their mouth more than they listen. You can't, you, sometimes I'm talking to folk on the phone, I can't even get a word in. But Lord, I don't even know why they call me. I, 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 I can't. And the Lord said, just shut up and listen. Just shut up and listen. So I say, okay. So I let him. And they just keep on going. And I just listen. And when they get to talking, I say, is there anything else you want to say? No. I say, let's pray. I, I, I can't impart anything. Because you know everything. So, see, when you call a man of wisdom, a woman of God of wisdom, you're seeking an answer. But if you're out talking them, one of the things that happens is you never mature. You never grow. You never learn because you talk too much. That's not being mean. That's just being honest. People, you will find people full of wisdom and knowledge are very well listeners. They talk very little. But when they speak, they speak with power and authority because they're well versed in whatever it is you're seeking God for and they can give you wise counsel. Some people don't want wise counsel. They just want to unload. You know how you don't upload a dump truck of rocks? You take it to the landfill and what do you do? You unload it. Some folks want to unload what they're carrying in their spirit they just want to dump it on somebody else. It's, I'm just being honest. And you have, to, you have to say, Father, protect my heart, protect my spirit, and they're released. Oh. In other words, cover me so that whatever they're releasing don't affect me. And then I can pray for them and shift their spirit, and they can go on until the next time when they call again. Notice what I said, when they call again. See? See, watch this now. James 3 verse 13. Who is a wise man endureth with knowledge among you? Let him show out. I'm sorry. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. Let me read that again. Who is a wise man endureth with knowledge among you? Let him show out a good conversation. His works with meekness and wisdom. I just said that. Wise people demonstrate. Wise people release based on what the Holy Spirit has poured in them. And that's what I'm saying today to all the fathers. Don't allow what you're facing, what you're going through, to dominate and dictate your life. Seek the Father for wisdom and guidance. Because that's what God wants. Wisdom of the heavenly father for his chosen seed. God wants us to have wisdom. He wants us to have knowledge. He wants us to have understanding, counsel and might and the fear of the Lord, the seven lamps of fire around the throne of God. Many people lack 
wisdom. And they're not seeking it. They're not searching for it. Therefore, they can't find it. Some people say, I've been looking for wisdom for years. And I've never obtained it. And that's because you've been looking in all the wrong places. Wisdom is found in the Holy Spirit. So unless you surrender and reject sin and iniquity, you will only have common wisdom. But when you seek the Holy Spirit, you'll have spiritual wisdom that comes with power and authority. See, God gives you wisdom through the Holy Spirit over demonic attacks, over principalities, over yokes of the enemy. See, God gives you spiritual wisdom, power and fire that comes through the Holy Spirit to burn out demonic forces and demonic attacks. This is the wisdom God gives to us through the Holy Ghost. He gives us that conquering wisdom. The Holy Spirit will conquer demonic attacks. All you got to do is speak the word of God because it's already loaded with fire. It's already a weapon. It's already a two-edged sword. It already cuts going and coming. So when you decree and declare it into the atmosphere, it only knows how to perform what God ordained. My word will do that thing that I said it to. It shall not. It cannot. It will not come back to be void. Amen. Let us pray. Father, today we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you now for your word. But we have failed to understand wisdom and the measure of wisdom that you're trying to pour in our hearts. We repent right now and ask your forgiveness. Father, we ask you to shift us and part this word today in our heart in the spirit of who we are for your kingdom and for your glory. We ask you to bind Satan and every satanic attack of the enemy. Father, they will keep you from getting all the glory, all the honor, all of the praises. Now we ask you as we repent to let your Holy Spirit, there it is, receive that, begin to shift us now. Align us with your purpose and your destiny for your kingdom and for your glory. Take this word today, activate it within our hearts and our spirits. Set us in motion to walk in the measure of wisdom you've ordained for us to walk in even now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, Father, seal this word, every crevice, every crack, seed, root, and fruit. Activate it now in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, if you're on this live and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in this auditorium, just say, Father, I'm a sinner. Your word decrees and declares in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say, Father, today, I'm a sinner. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. I repent of all sin, all iniquity, and all ungodliness, and I ask your forgiveness. Say, Father, today, your word says that if I confess that Jesus Christ is your son, I shall be saved. Say, Father, today, I accept and I receive Jesus Christ, your son, who died and rose for my sin and for the sin of the entire world. I receive him today as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All things are passed away. All ills becoming new. The greatest miracle of all miracles is the miracle of salvation. Amen. So we thank God right now for salvation to the lost. If you just accepted Christ, welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Open your Bibles now and begin to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's your responsibility to learn about your new Lord and your new Savior. Open your Bibles and read the Word of God for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Read it for yourself. Not only that, but also the book of Acts, where it talks about the day of Pentecost. Acts 2, verse number 2 says, And on the day of Pentecost there came a sound as a rushing mighty wind, filled the house where they were sitting, and began to fill them. And they began to utter in other men's language. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for every born-again believer. What gift are we talking about? The gift of wisdom. 
The Holy Spirit is the gift of wisdom. God said, ask for wisdom. Ask in Matthew 7 and 7 and Luke 11 and 9. It shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. This is what God says for you and I to do as sons and daughters in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, today, these that have accepted you as Lord and Savior, we pray for them right now. Cover them in the blood of Jesus Christ. Seal them and align them with purpose and destiny as you've ordained it to be now. Bind Satan, bind Lucifer, bind every attack of the enemy that comes against your will in their lives. Father, cover them in the blood of Jesus. For you said we're covered in the blood and the blood cleanses. We're sealed in the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And bind Satan now. Father, align them with purpose and destiny now. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, Apostle Space, where do I read this? Where do I find this? Read the Word of God in the NIV, the King James Version of the Bible, the New King James Version. Read it in the Amplified Version. Read it in the Eastward Version. Read the Word of God in the U Version. Put God's Word in your hearts. Put it in your spirits. Your responsibility to learn about your new Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to take the time to thank those of you that joined us today. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for you taking the time to join us. Again, if you're joining this live late, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. We just decree and declare the blessings and the abundance of God over each and every one of you now. Those of you that have been sowing and that have been giving, the Bible says in, in um, Malachi 3, 8, 11, Will a man rob God? Yet ye robbed me. But you say, when have we robbed thee? Tithes and offering. You're cursed with a curse, and you've robbed me even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, with said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And your seed shall not cast it for the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And you shall be a delightsome land. All nations shall call you blessed. And for those of you that want the New Testament, Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. God's word decrees and declares in Deuteronomy 1, I will increase you a thousandfold. Ask God to increase you one thousandfold through the seed that you give. His word decrees and declares in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. Hear me, O Judah. Believe in the Lord thou God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophet. So shall you prosper. That's the word of God. I decree and declare God's word. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all of your need are according as riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let me bless your seed. Father, today these sons and these daughters that are hearing your voice, that's obeying you. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hear the Lord saying, In order to see me do something I've never done, you got to do something you've never done. Father, today, as they release, as you instruct them, According to Deuteronomy 8.18 But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God For it is he that give thee power Which is authority to get wealth That he may establish this covenant with the forefathers As it is this day We decree and declare that word Working in their lives You will increase them a thousandfold We decree and declare your word working in their lives you, We decree and declare Third John the love I desire above all things That thou mayest prosper and be in health Even as thou so prosperous we activate the word of God over the seeds of your sons and daughters right now. And we bind Satan, Lucifer, and every attack of the enemy comes against your will now in their lives. But release your glory, your fire, your oil, and your anointing over every seed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bind the spirit of lack and we release increase and abundance. We bind the spirit that causes you to be in poverty and we release the spirit that prospers you, the Holy Spirit. We bind Lolibar, we bind Desertute, we bind the spirit of life now in Jesus' name. And we decree and declare the abundance of God through the kingdom and the word of God over you now. We bind that spirit that causes us not to bring forth breakthrough. We decree and declare supernatural breakthrough in your lives now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare debt cancellation of old debt. We release that anointing to prosper you and to bring you from the place of debt into the place of abundance in the name of our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We bind the enemy. Now, Father, activate this word in the hearts and the minds of your sons and daughters now 
In Jesus Christ, you see, I'm going to see us by the name we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody say, money cometh unto me now from the north, south, east, and west. Kingdom wealth, kingdom abundance comes unto me now from the north, south, east, and and west. The Bible says you should be the head, not the tail. Above, not beneath. The first, not the last. The beginning, not the end. That's the word of God. The created, declared into the atmosphere. Bind Satan and every attack of the enemy coming against your finances. It's your responsibility to go out into your neighborhood, look into the atmosphere, and bind the demonic attacks of the enemy coming against your finances, coming against employment, coming against health, wealth, prosperity, and abundance in your life. Bind every demonic attack in your region, in your territory, in your nation, now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and release kingdom wealth and kingdom abundance. Don't just bind, but also release, because the Bible says, whatever you bind in earth, God binds in heaven. Whatever you release in earth, God releases it from heaven. Release kingdom abundance from heaven over your life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank those of you that joined us today. Write me, Barris Bates Ministries, P.O. Box 38, Clemens, North Carolina, 27012. Again, that's Barris Bates Ministries, P.O. Box 38, Clemens, North Carolina, 27012. Email me at barrisbates at gmail.com. That's barrisbates at gmail.com. You can also zell and Venmo me at barrisbates at gmail.com. Thank you for joining us today. We just bid you Godspeed. Happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. Join us tomorrow morning. The Lord's willing. We live to see it. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the various platforms. Be blessed and have a good and prosperous day in God. God bless you now. Bye-bye. Come on, saints. Put your hands together and begin to give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise.